I mean, it's the NFL. You know, uh, we have some opportunities coming up, and uh, we still got two games left in the regular season before we get in the playoffs. And so for me, um, I'm trying to look at the big picture of what we're trying to do, what our team goals are. Um, but at the same time, man, I have to look myself in the mirror and, and ask myself why or how that happened and why I made those decisions. And so um, our team came ready to play. And, um, you know, for me to make some decisions like that, um, it pains me, you know, and it's not fair to these guys. So I have to realize that and understand that. And um, I have to get better for my team. Let's talk about the game. Let's talk about the interceptions. Let's talk about, you know, he went from MVP favorite to four interceptions. And we're going to talk about each one of those interceptions. But overall, this was by far Brock Purdy's worst game Probably not for sure as a pro. His career. Maybe of his entire high school, college, college. NFL. And it was on the, one of the biggest stages. Yeah. And, you know, the lights were out. And usually Brock performs well underneath the lights. It just looked like he was a deer stuck in headlights after the first interception. Because here's the thing. The first interception was on him. And he Correct. knew that. And we don't know what was being said to him. But he was in his own head. I know, and, and it happens. It happens to me, John. It happens to you. Like you get stuck in your own head and you become your own worst critic. And next thing you know, you're overcompensating. Now, the same way we thrashed a kicker, a rookie, for missing field goals because he was trying to overcompensate, is the same smoke you got to give to the leader of your team, which is the quarterback. Brock Purdy. This is not bashing him, but this is a way he has to go out there and get better. It just seemed like after the first interception, he couldn't shake it off. And I didn't understand after that first interception why Kyle Shanahan had to be so damn pass heavy. And so that's why I was scratching my head because at the half, the ratio was 18 to 10. And I know that don't seem like it's far off. That's eight more pass plays to run plays and in the run game you were more dynamic hell the ravens were ranked 10th and stopping the run and they proved that they couldn't stop the run because they play with two damn safeties way back in the middle of the field so yep. clearly they're playing pass. So, so help me understand I, why you just don't run the deck on ball you know you go to that first drive and you were moving the ball but there wasn't a running back next to purdy no running attempts, no threat of running the ball. And if you look throughout this entire season, and you know, I'm just going to say this, my favorite clip maybe of all time right here. And us being a one-dimensional football team isn't very good. I don't know why Kyle doesn't understand that. Like, it, it's not even that you have to run the ball all the time. The threat of the run freezes the linebackers. Yeah, the window's I, all open. And so I, whenever you do that empty set where – yes. It, they, it, and just over and over again, like yeah. no threat of running the ball, despite the fact that we averaged 6.7 yards per carry. Yeah. Kyle and, gives and, up on the running game all the and, damn time. And Christian McCaffrey is averaging 7.4 yards per carry. And here's the thing I couldn't figure out. So people were saying, you know, and I get it. They got great linebackers. Ask me if I care. Like that doesn't matter. This is football. You run against the great linebackers. It's not like they're stacking the box. When John just explained, made perfect sense. If you have zero running backs in the backfield, hey, guess what they're going to do, ladies and gentlemen? They're going to pass the ball. Where's the ding ding? It's common sense. It's common sense. It made zero sense. When I tell you, John, and I'm not trying to overreact here, but when I tell you I couldn't explain it to a kindergartner, what the hell was going on? I, my son, I... I so I, I don't get it. It doesn't yeah. make sense. It didn't even seem like 49ers football. So it doesn't matter if they got Patrick Queen. I ain't hear Roquan Smith the whole name, whole game. I hear his name called. It was Patrick Queen, Patrick Queen, Patrick McQueen. It was Queen. That was it. So you mean to tell me they couldn't run to the outside? What happened to the outside zone? Ain't that what our team is built off of? Find the clip where George Kittle says, well, hey, if we run it to the outside, outside zone. That's what we should have been doing. Yeah, you ain't gotta I, run to the freaking middle of the field. I take any run play, any time we run, even if it's for one yard, I'm happy because it just opens up. And what was the best drive of the game? CFC, 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 touchdown. I mean, it was simple. And then after that, you abandoned it. You didn't do it before. Afterwards, you abandoned. You throw the ball. How many times did we throw the damn ball? 
It was 48 ridiculous. times total. 48 to 18. That's ridiculous. And, and again, it's not like, yeah, I understand that some people are going to be like, well, whenever the game was out of control, there was a point in the third quarter where we threw four interceptions and we were only down four points. I didn't understand it. It was 16 to 12 coming out of the half. Clearly, Kyle Shanahan's game plan was to get more balanced. He ran it. He threw it. He ran it. <laughs> he threw an interception. Yeah. So, like, no, 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 no. I'm sorry. Not an interception on that first drive. I apologize. It was a run. It was a throw. It was like an incomplete pass. It was a, uh, uh, it was an incomplete pass to, uh, what's his name? Uh, Willie Sneed. Then you get a penalty on fourth down, fourth and five, which makes it fourth and 10. You punt the ball and then you get another penalty from Mitch Wisnowski. When I tell you, John, the penalty, like, how do you go from a game with like two penalties and then just go straight 10? Like, yeah. like, we just we just can't be consistent in our discipline. There's so, so many factors to why the 49ers got their asses whipped. Literally, there's so many factors. Phil strangely calm right now. Does Brock Purdy bounce back, John? Yeah, I, I'm not concerned about Purdy long term. This was a lot of learning experiences. And, you know, I, I want to do this. I, I want to Shout out to the man Juan Salas. He went through, he cut up the film clips and has, you know, kind of superimposed some film on top of these clips. This is Kyle Shanahan going through all four interceptions with film on top of it. So if you're just listening to audio wise, again, we'll, we'll kind of go back through and explain some of this. But this is a 50 second clip and it's just a quick look. Every one of these plays with Phil backing it up, what happened? Yeah, I, thought, I mean, the one that he was off on was the first one. Um, just read the coverage wrong and. Didn't expect someone to be back there and made a bad decision on the first one. Um, second one, um, the corner made a hell of a play blitzing. He couldn't get it over him. The guy tipped it and ended up making it to himself. Uh, the third one, scrambling. I didn't really see what happened on it. I mean, I saw the end result. I don't know what happened on the ball, whether 14 made a play, whether they both hit it at the same time. Um, but he broke out of the pocket on a big third down, had George and 14 coming back to him and threw it right at them, and it just bounced up and got another tip. And then um, the fourth one in the third quarter, and he was making the right decision, going to Christian on a check down, and someone hit him from the right side, and the ball came out sideways and went right to their linebacker. So I thought that, you know the first one was a big mistake, and uh, the other three was um, pretty unfortunate for him. So, yeah, I, I, I'm not overly concerned about Brock Purdy moving forward. You know, PFF, very similar to what that clip we just said, they only attributed two turnover-worthy plays to Brock Purdy. Like, they were some weird plays. Ball batted up. The ball's got to bounce your way. I say this all the time. Sometimes the ball goes your way. Sometimes it doesn't. Yeah. You take away two of those interceptions that were batted up in the air, it's a different ball game. Not saying the 49ers would win, but you only lost by 14, and you were driving to score at the end with Sam Darnold out there. It was going to be a one-touchdown game. I don't know. I'm not concerned about Brock moving forward. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not concerned about him. It's it's just more like it's it's more about his mental. Like like Brock, you had your worst game of your life. Period. Now you got to get over it. You got to yeah. throw it out and come back and take the team in front of you and be better. And, and and who cares if they say, "Oh well, he can't do that against a great defense." No, don't, don't give a flying fuck about that. You just come out and now throw eight touchdowns against the Commanders. Like do. What you do. And if Brock does what he does and bees who he bees, then he's going to be just fine. It's not it's not a, it's not a question. I think two of those interceptions were on Brock Purdy. I don't give a fuck if he got hit or not. That interception was on Brock Purdy, just like the first one was on Brock Purdy where he didn't get hit. And if you go back and play that play, it looked like the hit came after he threw the ball. So, yeah, the pressure can affect the pass for sure. But the other ones were bang, bang plays made by the Ravens. I mean, the ball pops up in the air for 50 yards. It comes down. It goes to Kyle Hamilton's hands. I mean, you can't you can't be mad at that. He made a play. It, the ball just didn't bounce their way. I know a lot of people are talking about that third one because, oh, George Kittle should have caught that. Hell, that shit should have been passed interference. Look how quick the should've defender. That one, one should have been thrown. It shouldn't have been thrown because it was 800 flags. So you could blame that one on Brock Purdy if you don't blame the fourth one. But at the end of the day, it's just like if the rest would have called P.I., it would have went our way. Instead, it was three flags on the 49ers on that play. And yeah. so, like, they just weren't in our favor. But Brock has to be the most competent player on the football field. So if you if you can throw touchdowns, 
you can take that fanfare and be great, but if you make throw the, throw the interceptions, you got to take the heat. You got to take the heat, and it's okay. Yeah, and I'll say this. Three of his interceptions came with not, without a running back in the backfield. Empty set. Empty sets. I mean, John, at the end of the day, when you look at an empty set and you say to yourself, why, Kyle? Well, he wants to isolate matchups, and I think this is another problem. Like That's that fine, very but you're playing drive. against a very crazy, fast, tough defense. So, so you can – go ahead. I, I'm just saying, like, okay, that very first drive out of the half, right? You come out, it's third down. It was like third and four. Yes. And we're in an empty set, and it's a very clear one-on-one. And whenever the film comes out, I'm excited to break this play down. It was so clear. Ayuk was one-on-one man coverage on the outside. Yeah. But the system – and this is why Brock's so great and why Kyle loves him so much, rightfully so. He will go to the system to a T. He knows the rules, and he's going to follow the rules. The rules say the hook to curl is going to be open to the slot wide receiver, but that's Willie Sneed. That's Willie Sneed. You have Ayuk one-on-one with their worst corner on the outside, but instead, my first reprogression is the slot guy, which is Willie Sneed. He throws that. It was incomplete. And it's just like, dude, how can you not check to oh, you're one-on-one about coming out coverage? of the half? Okay, I got you. I just and it's needed just to... like, I, I love you. Brock, and he's going to do what the system always says, but at some point, it's Jimmy's and Joe's, not X's and O's. And you got to trust somebody that can cook one of their least, their worst secondary player. Instead, we targeted Snead against their best secondary player. And it, like it's things like that that bother me. And that's not really a Brock thing. I think I walk away from this game, and I, I don't know if other people feel the same way. I'm more concerned about Kyle Shanahan and the concerns I've had of him for a long time. I love Kyle. He, if I could start a team and could choose any head coach in the NFL, I'm taking Kyle Shanahan first. Uh, I know people would disagree with that. That's okay. But it doesn't mean he doesn't have issues. There's some major issues there, in my opinion. Time for the 49ers Rush Podcast. 